Hi friends, my name is Trey Hager. I'm the pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Mount Pleasant, Iowa, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for this Trinity Sunday worship service. So you can see that I have my communion element set out for today, and I would ask that if you haven't set up your worship space, that you go ahead and take the time to do that. You can uh, find some bread. It can be uh, any type of bread that you have. It could be a cookie, it could be a cracker, something to represent the body of Christ. And then uh, a cup, and you can use coffee, you can use water, you can use wine, you can use grape juice, as something to represent uh, the cup of salvation from Christ for our communion time. And again, Jesus turned ordinary things into extraordinary things. And they recognized him in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of a cup, not just at the Passover meal, but later on with some of the resurrection um, stories too. So anything that you can have uh, will help us uh, join together in worship. So I, I know that we can't worship together in the church right now, but we can worship together as the church. And so here we are gathered together as the people of God. Our session is meeting this Monday, June 8th, and we will talk about uh, moving forward and slow opening the church. We're going to go into phases. And of course, uh, many of us will be gathering tomorrow right behind me at Old Threshers in the food pavilion. And so while you're watching this, we may be worshiping with you together over there. Uh, we'll be social distancing, bring our own lawn chairs, and we'll be celebrating communion too. And so we have that going on. Um, and we're going to start our outside groups as well. And we'll be meeting in small groups and in people's driveways. And so I, I would uh, ask that you join with us in that if you're able, if you're near, if you're far away. Thank you for joining in. You can share uh, these services online with your friends. Just just. Uh, share the link or invite them to Google our website. And I would also ask that you uh, be willing to share your tithes and offerings. We have a lot of ministries going on. We're still doing a lot of work of being the church. We're doing our kitchen renovation. We just partnered with Meals on Wheels to do some of that, to use our facilities for that. And uh, we still have our Iowa Winds ministry going on in the food pantry. So uh, the life of the church is still ongoing. And, and we're working uh, too to proclaim a message about what it means to be the church at this time uh, with the uh, racial divisions, uh, with the national divisions, but with the COVID-19. Uh, and so at our session meeting, we're going to be talking about putting out a, a statement to, to share that we think shines the light of God and uh, what the message from Jesus is that has shaped us as God's people and that we want to share something like that. So we'll be do, doing some of that public work as well. Okay, well, if you're ready, uh, light your candle and send your hearts and minds and let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. Gracious God, we bring you the broken parts of ourselves. Hem us in before and behind. Creator God, we bring you the joyful parts of ourselves. Weave us together in hope and praise. God of new life, we bring you doubt and faith knotted up in our hearts. Unravel our doubt. Weave our faith into our hearts. Draw us together and point us toward you. In hope and faith we pray. In hope and faith we worship. Amen. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, 
and the waters that were gathered together God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth and there was evening and there was morning the fifth day and God said let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind and it was so God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created the human, humanity, the Dom, in God's image. In the image of God, God created him, it, male and female, God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, and everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. 
These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Our scripture lesson for today comes from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came near and spoke to them. I've received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi friends, I'm glad to share with you a short message today about, about our readings for this Trinity Sunday. So one of the things that we're doing is we're starting a new series called Unraveled. And it's about what happens when the plans of our lives get unraveled. Where do we find God in the midst of that unraveling? Before we get into that, I do want to just touch quickly on the on the Genesis devotion reading that we had that that was the assigned reading for this Trinity Sunday and it is just one of the most beautiful pieces of poetry in all of scripture about the creation of all things and it ends on that Sabbath on that Sabbath day of rest, which is something that's so important for our lives to reclaim. Even in this time of social distancing, when we've had some shutdown and quarantine stuff going on, I have still, I have still personally found it hard to have a complete day of rest. Um, things are still busy, life is still busy, but it's just so neat to remember that there was a time when you just spent the day remembering what it was like to walk in the garden with God, and that that day was set apart for that. And, and I think it's important for us to start reclaiming some of that Sabbath time for our own lives. And one of the things I have loved about this quarantine time is that people have set up little places of Sabbath rest in their homes where they've uh, made a little sanctuary with their candle and uh, a little place, even if it's at the kitchen table or in the recliner or at the computer place, they set apart a place as holy uh, where, where they know that God was present with them in their home. And I think that's, that's beautiful. I think about um, where we are right now with the great unraveling of our nation and some of the things that we are looking at and some of the divisions that we're noticing. And, and I think of tying that in with the Great Commission where Jesus tells us, go and make disciples to the ends of the earth, right? baptizing in my name, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And what does it mean then to make disciples? And, and what Jesus says is to teach them uh, my way, teach them the things I have taught you, the things I have commanded you. And what Jesus commanded was less right belief as it was right practice, right? That the belief in Jesus was teaching the way of Jesus, believing and following that way of the golden rule. And, and he was talking about, talking about what it means to love others, to do unto others. And we hear that over and over again. And I think we hear that because we need that. We need that message, especially at a time of disunity, when we are somewhat disfigured as a nation, uh, what it means to be held together by these disciplines of loving one another. This theme of being unraveled uh, brought to mind so many things in my life when expectations became unraveled. So growing up, I had these expectations of what it was uh, to, to be a Marine. I wanted to be a U.S. Marine so bad. And then when I went when I went to the Marine Corps, uh, it was so different from what I expected. And isn't that true about so much in life, right? Like, this is what it's going to be like when I go off to college. And this is going to be like when, what it's going to be like when I get married. And this is what, what it's going to be like when I own my first home. This is going to be what it's like when I retire. And this is going to be what it's like when I have grandkids. And rarely, rarely do the fantasies in our head match up to reality. Sometimes reality is way better, uh, but a lot of times there's, there's a little contrast there. 
And, and I think it can also happen so that uh, we feel like things come unraveled in our lives when we make all these plans and all of a sudden there's this one thread and it's just pulled out and the whole thing just falls apart on us. Like what's next? How do we, how do we move next? And there's this great, great illustration of this in uh, the book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, where Rabbi Harold Kushner uh, talks about Thur Thornton Wilder. And Thornton Wilder wrote, wrote this book uh, called uh, The River at San Luis or The Brand Bridge at San Luis Rey. And the story is told that there were five uh, people walking across this bridge and the bridge collapsed and the five people died. And the priest in the town was really struggling with what did this mean? Why did this happen? And in, in it, it, it said Thornton Wilder, the author, kind of came up with, well, it was their time. It was this plan, right? And, and shared that in the book. And, and then at the end of this book, where you, where you expect it to kind of end that way, uh, it doesn't. It, 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 ends, it doesn't end the way you expect with all of these things being resolved. It ends in this kind of messy, unfulfilled, uh, but still life type of way. Uh, he wrote another book, Thornton Wilder, uh, called The Eighth Day. And in this book, he revisits this theme of tragedy. And in it, it's a plane crash of 250 people. But this time in the crash, all of the people uh, die. And, and he, said, he said that this was more like a tapestry, right? And, and on this side of the tapestry, we, we see this beautiful artwork of, of creation and life and all of these things being interwoven to create this beautiful, this beautiful piece of work. But when we turn the tapestry over on, on the other side of this tapestry, there are some strings that are knotted, some that are frayed, some that are cut short, some that are real long, some that are tied together. And it just looks like a mess. It just looks like a mess. And we don't understand why some lives are cut short and some lives are, are longer and why some are knotted and some are frayed. But the, the whole reason for all that is to create this beautiful piece of art. And in this, in this book, Harold Krishner says to Thornton Wilder, no. No. He said that's, that's the same as saying as if all these good things uh, are all, all of these things are, are to blame. All these bad things, all the suffering, all this stuff, the people on the bridge, the people in the plane, uh, all these cancers, all these diseases are made just so that God can make this one beautiful tapestry. And he said, no, I reject that. He said that's, that's, that's equal to saying that um, the bad things that Hitler did were okay because they lead to these good things. He said, no, no. He said, the reality is, the reality is our lives are cut short. Uh, some of our lives are frayed. Some of our lives are long. And he said, and life is still beautiful. Right? It's not one side of the tapestry or the other. He said, and our lives are still beautiful. And, and when things start to come unraveled, I think that's, we, we find God in that unraveling, that God is still present uh, through Christ, through the people, uh, through our ability to sit and be. Uh, even in crisis, we find God there. I was talking to a friend of mine who's going through some, some things in life that are bigger than anyone can handle. And, and, and she said, you know, people keep saying, you've got this, you've got this. And she said, she finally said, you know what? I don't, I just flat out don't have it. And she said, in knowing that, in knowing that I don't have it, I had it. I finally just let it go and said, I don't have it. And in that she found the ability to just be in the mess. Uh, and to accept that this is life and life is still beautiful and she can't change any of these circumstances. You know, no, it's like that old serenity prayer, know the things you can change and the things you can't change and uh, the wisdom to know the difference, right? And, and when we can just realize that there's no one often to blame for some of these things, uh, like tragic accidents, bridges, planes, things like that, uh, we can be 
and we can start to find in that unraveling where God is. Now, there are other things like we see with the systemic injustices in the world, some things like that, where we need to affect a change on the world, right? Uh, and I think that's where we find this message from Jesus to go and make disciples and that we carry that forth. Um, and so there's this both and, right? And it's the wisdom to know the difference. Listen, there is so much that we could say about the the nature of the world that we're in uh, and this, this commission that we have to go and make disciples. But um, one of the things I want to close with is that on this Trinity Sunday, when we celebrate Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, um, Mother, Mother Nature, Creator, God, right? Uh, Jesus, brother, son, uh, had sisters, has, has the Holy Spirit that represents Ruach, uh, the feminine wisdom of God. Sophia is the name in scripture that's used. What we see with this Trinity, this diversity of God, and with everything that's going on, with the unraveling of the world that we see, I think it's important to celebrate that diversity of God that we, that we see because God created us that way too. And there's beauty in that. So may you enjoy uh, this coming devotional video and then we'll come back and we'll break bread together. It's been a long walk. Bring me your feet, tender from the journey. Let me care for you. Sit with me. Rest. Friends, there is something I must go through, a path I must follow, a way of life I have been asked to reveal. Fear has gone viral. People are hungry and bloodthirsty. They're calling for my life, and I will deliver. But I am not leaving you alone. I give you to one another to love and to cherish. There is nothing more important. This is my parting gift, a holy meal. Take a cup of my essence and a handful of bread. Let us bless the richness of God's love, the deep well of divine mercy, and the gift of being. I hope that you remember me. Remember us. Come and take and eat and share. Share with everyone. Call them to the upper room. Give them a seat at the table. Pray with them in the garden. Pass on all that I've given to you. Give it all away. Come and take and eat. Come and take and eat. Come and take and eat. Let us affirm our faith before celebrating Holy Communion. I believe in God, the great sower, who weaves us together in community, collecting our loose ends and turning them into belonging. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who hems us in before and behind, catching us when we fall and writing us into God's holy narrative. And I believe in Jesus Christ, who loved and claimed the people society had thrown out, refusing to disregard anyone as scrap. I believe God has woven part of God's self into the fiber of our being, making us inherently worthy of love and belonging. I believe the fabric of my life is weak, that I am prone to error and need God's handiwork to remind me of love. I believe in the church and that like a quilt of different fabrics, she is designed to be as diverse and beautiful as God's creation. And I believe that when God, when life unravels, God is there to stitch the wounds together to hold me in the palm of God's hand, 
to tell me of love and to invite me into a new journey. Amen. I hope you've had a chance to grab your your juice and your and your bread. If not, you can press pause and and come back after you get those things and have your candle lit to set apart this sacred time. So, we remember in in the story of Jesus meeting the disciples uh, after his resurrection that they walked together and they talked about all the things of life and Scripture. And and when they talked deeply like this, they they realized that this guy was kind of showing them the whole way of life. And then they sat down together at the campfire and they said, why don't you stay with this stranger? And they ate together. And when Jesus had broken the bread, they recognized him, right? And which is to say, when we share in the deep things of life together, uh, we are with Christ in that way. So we remember how on the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ. In the same way, he took the cup and he poured it out. This was to be the cup of wrath, the last cup of the supper that was to be set out for the punishment of the world and set outside the door. But Jesus took this cup and he blessed it and he poured it and he said, this is the cup of salvation. It is my blood shed for the forgiveness of all sin. Drink this in remembrance of me. Instead of giving us wrath, he gave us his life and his love, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Most holy God, we thank you for this meal that unites us together, for this bread that was broken, that makes us whole, for this cup that was spilt, that fills us up with your spirit. We ask for peace upon this world, for your way to be shown, for us to do unto others in all things. Help us be your disciples, your disciplined doers of your commandments to love all people. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, go with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit being shown on you and through you to all those you love. In Christ's name, amen.